I have been involved with 200 TDI cam belts for about four years now. Um, started off when I bought a scrap 200 TDI engine, rebuilt it, and I had no idea how to do the timing when I had got it to this sort of stage. Uh, since then, I've done, um, I've done the Range Rover, and now I'm doing this. So, but when I did my first one, I kept getting it wrong. Uh, little silly mistakes uh, just left me uh, in trouble really um, and I had to do it again so this is a lot of things I've learnt the first one I did was done in a series Land Rover so it has a cross member underneath the chassis so you cannot get a timing pin into the flywheel with this obviously it's a discovery uh, I've put the timing pin in and the timing pins are well worth buying if you plan on doing this for a business or whether you plan on doing it yourself a couple of times. Uh, this engine is relatively low mileage according to the odometer and you look around it and it looks relatively low mileage uh, and you hear it run. The So it's probably only had probably three or four cam belts in its 28 year life. Uh, the cam belt that came off is or was down here So this is the camera that came off and you can clearly see it wasn't running quite right. Uh, it's also very flexible and this wants to be quite tight and uh, solid. So I'm, I would say that this is definitely ready for changing. Uh, I didn't take it off because I felt I needed to. It was just that because the vehicle stood so long, it's probably not had a cam belt in probably six or seven years. So providing it was in time as well when, it, when the time came. Uh, it's also quite glossy on the exterior surface, so it's probably done probably a good 30 or 40,000 mile that. So, moving on, I'm going to bin now. Uh, the tensioners, uh, these are the tensioners, this is one of them, uh, or this is the tensioner. Uh, you can also, if you hold it and then try and wiggle it side to side, you can feel, you can't, you probably can't see it, but there is a bit of movement, and when you when you run it, it, it sounds quite grindy. Uh, I'll just show you the other one quickly. This one doesn't feel as bad. It certainly doesn't sound as bad. So this was probably replaced and it looks... You can still see the machine marks on there so it probably um, hasn't done that many miles that. Which is a bit silly because it's stupid to replace the cam belt and not the tensioners. So the first thing I've been doing this morning is I've just been changing the oil seals uh, so that we don't get any oil leaks on our nice new cam belt. The bottom pulley is a uh, bit of a nightmare to fit uh, or take off even. So what I'm suggesting is that you cover the crankshaft in oil and also just cover the uh, sealing surface in oil as well, just to help it when it's on that first start. Uh, put a bit of oil on the crankshaft and that will help it, help prevent it from seizing up. So I'm going to use a bit of persuasion on that. Uh, as if I can't find any tools. So the bottom pulley is now in place. I'm now going to fit the uh, the idler onto the shaft, which is there. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say. Yes, uh, here it is. There, there is an arrow on the on the case on the aluminium casting. Uh, that is so you you align the woodruff key on the crankshaft up with the arrow, so the crankshaft is in the right position. Uh, that yellow mark is where there is a centre punch. And that centre punch simply lines up with the casting there. So that's how you would do it. That's that's, the right, that's how you know it's in the right position. What I do is I spend the full money and buy the kit. So with this kit, you get the belt, the tensioners, the water pump gasket, and the um, the other thing, the uh, the time the the cam belt cover gasket as well. So the, uh, the idler will go on here, just make sure the surfaces are clean before you fit them. 
the idle goes on there, and the nut is down here. It's uh, you must torque everything around here up to the required torque because you don't want any of these bits coming off, falling off the hazard revs because that would destroy the engine. The this type of engine is called an interference engine. So the valve gear, which is up inside here, which is in the head, um, will clash with the pistons um, should this belt break. So it's important to torque these up. I've just done that up loose for now. Uh, the torque wrench wants to be set to either 45 newton meters or 33 pounds feet. Newton meters, 33 pounds full. So, next bit. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce the pump sprocket. Everything in this, uh, everything in this engine was absolutely covered with the uh, belt dust, and I've done my best to clean it out. Although it's not perfect, it's considerably better than what it was. And to clean it out, I used engine and uh, engine degreaser. So if you don't, so like I say, if, if you if you've lost your um, if your belt's broke and you don't know where anything is, then what you need you either need a timing pin, which is one of these, or you need a nine and a half mil drill uh, to be able to line the pump up in the right place. So you know when the pump's lined up because. You know that you know the pump's in the right place because that will simply locate in there like that. Yeah. Uh, this now needs bolting up with three 10 mil bolts, eight mil bolts even. That yellow mark was just on there because there's that many holes in the gear itself. Uh, it just helps me know which way to put it on, so I'm not there trying to line trying to line holes up. So I'm gonna leave that in place for now. I'm gonna leave it loose. That is your uh, tension adjustment when we put the belt on, which we're gonna do that in a minute. So I'm just gonna clean that face up there. That's where our tensioner is going to go. So this is the new belt. So we can see that it's quite a bit stiffer. It's, it's retaining its shape that it was in the uh, packet much better than the old one ever would have. So my first job is to make sure that I'm happy with the camshaft sprocket, which is that. Uh, and I would say I am. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that, that is roughly about there. And then I'm going to introduce this at the bottom of the, on the bottom pulley. Like that. I've never done this on camera before, so I don't. It could be one big disaster. I'm not physically strong enough to be able to tension that myself. So if I get this wrong, what's going to happen is is that the camshaft will rotate and take all the slack, or take it all, it all, all turn that way. So I'm going to start again. Should that should go on at that. There it is. 
Right, so my trouble is now, obviously it's come off at this end. Right, so we're on an imposition. I can't reach the top of the bolt. I need to do is I need to get that get that hole through the dowel and then I need to tension it up and I can't remember what the tension is at the minute uh, but I will come to that in a minute in a so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that down pick up the extension and put my extension bar on that put that through there that's what it's designed to take I'm going to see what happens to this, but I'm not convinced it's going to do anything. No, because it's come off at this end. That's bad, that is. Right, for the benefit of how long this video is going to be, I'll stop the camera a minute. Right, so I've now got it in position, and I'm happy with where it is. Now you need to remember, when you're doing this bit on a series Land Rover, where you can't put the timing pin in the crankshaft, that the crankshaft will try to rotate as you tension it. Uh, obviously it won't on this one, but it will on a series. So you need to remember to either take the engine out before you do it, not ideal, but you can actually offset the the um, crank camshaft uh, and still have the pump in time so when you do a full rotation it will all come back to where it should be so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this contraption here uh, to position the to tension the, the camera out itself and this wants to be uh, 13 to 15 pounds foot I think yeah 200 TDI, uh, 13 to 15. So, what we, what I'm going to do is, having said that as well, uh, that that nut there, that bolt, wants to be uh, 33 pounds feet again. So, I've got everything ready when I come to do this. So, I'm going to set this up. I don't know what divisions these are in. That's, oh no. There we are. So about there. That's not doing a great deal. Just undo that. That's better. So I set that on 15. Now we'll bring the torque wrench in. So you do need three ends for this. This would really help if I had a torque wrench which had a ratchet on it, but you don't, so 
There we go. So that should now be tensioned up. So feels quite nice. What I need to do now is tighten them three three bolts, which are fuel pump fuel injection pump bracket 25 newton meter. So I'm going to get them torqued up and then I'll come back in a sec. So this is the timing pin that goes underneath the crank into the into the crankshaft. It's uh, spring loaded. So all you got to do is, is put it in, turn the engine slightly and then this will spring into position. So back on the top Put my timing pin back in the set. This is the set here. Obviously, we've still got one missing because it's still inside the uh, pump. So, obviously, I can't remove that. I need to, I may not be able to get it with this. There we go. Right, one last thing I need to do before I forget because I've done this before. Uh, I need to tighten up that bolt to the required torque and the torque for that is camshaft camshaft sprocket bolt 245 newton meters so right so my last job is to rotate the engine twice by hand before we can uh, start it properly so it has to go twice because I've got strength to do it, but to go one rotation on the on the on the crank is only gone half a rotation on the on the cam. So with it being a high compression engine, obviously it takes a lot to uh, to spin it. But there we go. If that had, if that had uh, seized up at any point, it would have told us something is not quite right with the timing. Like I said earlier, it's an interference engine, so it has to, it has to, to rotate freely before we can uh, do it properly. So, what I'm going to do now is we'll keep it in the guts and see if it fires into life. I've just noticed one very silly thing that I've tried to start the engine without the oil cooler in place and it's peed oil out absolutely everywhere but at least it runs wherever there's oil involved I can always make a mess this is the bit that I find the hardest to do so what you need to do is you need to tension two bolts uh, belts belts at the same time um, but using one tensioner. So, taking care not to slip over the oil that's on the floor still, we need to put this in here and tension that up like that. Not ridiculously tight because that'll wear the bearings, but just enough to, to, to get it like that. And then we need to use our socket down here. Like so. That should hold the. That should hold the the uh, power steering pump in position, and then due to the unique bolts that were put in this engine last time it was worked on, I need to change sockets and do that one like that. So that is now the uh, main drive belt fully tensioned and now need a 13 mil spanner which should be down here and then with three hands I need to put the spanner on there put 
the socket on there and using my shoulder I need to tension that like that. Now on, on the Range Rover I had there was a square hole cut into the power steering pump so you could tension that first, get it tightened up and then do that because this is a ridiculous system to do that. Obviously that one was slightly newer was a 93 this is a 90 so um, they obviously realized how stupid this system was when when they designed it so they changed it so that is now the main guts of the thing put back together what I need to do is I now need to put the radiator back in put the oil pump oil, oil cooler back back together and fill it with water and then we can go for a spin. Right, my last job on this is to now uh, get some heat in the water system and then I can uh, uh, bleed the system using this uh, bleed screw which is on there. So, start it up. This time we shouldn't have any oil leaks. Last thing I need to do is undo that bleed screw and let any air out to the uh, cooling system. I've not really run it for long enough to, for this to work effectively. Water in it. I have to get some uh, water. Well, I'll do that later. <laughs> 